Alexei Pushkov, you heard there what Hillary Clinton has said. Uh, your foreign minister has been pretty blunt in his rejection. Has any application for more helicopters to Syria come through your committee in the Duma? Well, those uh, things do not come through our committee in the Duma. This is between uh, executive of two states, and uh, the parliament is not in a position to consider those deals. What about uh, your understanding now of Russian policy? You're there to oversee the government and the president on policy. What is the Russian position, given that it has made clear you do not support Assad particularly? I think that uh, the Russian position is uh, not to allow uh, a new so-called humanitarian intervention. We had a statement on Syria adopted in the State Duma on uh, February 16, as far as I remember, and uh, all the four political parties represented in the Duma, in spite of very sharp differences on domestic issues, I mean also the opposition factions, have supported this statement. Uh, is the mood of your committee, though, one of being appalled by what is happening inside Syria? Well, we are appalled by what is happening inside Syria, but we don't think that the support of military insurgents will help to solve the situation. But what about some kind of other intervention? You don't support Assad. Mr. Lavrov has made that very clear. What about the security apparatus, which is clearly moving decisively again against the pro-reform protesters? Well, I'm not sure that those reform uh, protesters are pro-reform. I think it's a cliche which is used mostly in the West. These people are being backed by Saudi Arabia and Qatar, which do not strike me as democratic countries and pro-reform countries. Why are you, though, not prepared to make a, t take a much tougher line against Assad's security apparatus, who are clearly running this operation and, and, flaming, uh, and fueling the flames inside Syria? I don't think it's up to the Russian government to deal with the Syrian security apparatus. But, but you have a special relationship. We have a special relationship with the Syrian government, not with the uh, Syrian security forces. Uh, we uh, influence the Syrian government, and uh, we have basically uh, made an impact on the Syrian government so that it accepts the Kofi Annan plan. But uh, clearly they don't at the moment. They're violating it every day. Not only they, the insurgents too, and that's the problem. The problem is that uh, the insurgents get uh, si signs and signals of support from uh, some Arab countries and some Western countries, and that fuels their desire to or in a military way. Now, you were there a few weeks ago in Syria yourself. There have also been visits by very senior Russian security officials, including from the uh, FSB intelligence organization. So surely there is a way to try to persuade the Assad regime to scale back and not keep attacking. I'm afraid that Syria is really either on the verge of a civil war or already inside a civil war. At this point, things will be decided very much on the ground unless there is a political solution that is found. I think Russia on its side is quite ready to exercise pressure on the Syrian government so that it agrees on a political solution. But I think that the West and the Arab countries should exercise pressure on the military insurgents so that they also agree to a political solution. That's the only way out. But Mr. To the impression that Russian unilateralism is really giving the Syrian regime confidence to keep up its murderous attacks on civilians? I don't think so. I think that what we may have in Syria if the regime falls uh, is a full scale civil war. I've been in Damascus. Damascus is a booming city. The restaurants are open, people are in the cafe. Uh, it's a European city. You would think yourself maybe in southern France. But what if about the, Russia if, giving confidence to the, the regime? If the insurgents come to Damascus, this will end like we have seen this in Baghdad. And so uh, I'm afraid that uh, Russia is not giving assurance to the regime. But the, Russia does not want to support the military insurgency against the regime because it, we think it will be chaos and not 10,000 people will be dead, but maybe 100 or 150,000 will be dead like in the last eight years in Iraq. Well, Mr. Pushov, you're chair of a very important committee in the Duma. You sat across a table uh, with your equivalents in Damascus. What did you say to them and what was their reaction when you said you've got to stop this? Well, I even spoke to Mr. Assad. And uh, I said to Mr. Assad that uh, what should be made is that violence should be stopped. What did he say? And he said the violence should be stopped from both sides. And we are still at this point, unfortunately. Did and he listen not, to you? Did he take any notice? Well, we spoke more than one hour. And yes, I think he listens to Moscow. But uh, you have to take into account that he's also besieged in a way, because the insurgents control a part of the territory of the country. And as a president, he reacts. Did you believe you were talking to the person in charge of the security operation in Damascus or not?
complicated. But uh, I have been meeting... But does he run it or not? No, he does. He does. But, of course, he is under different influences and uh, under different pressures. But he did not strike me as particularly an evil person. I think he's interested to have a solution, but maybe he does not know how to reach it. What about the price, though, of Russian unilateralism? Last Thursday, we had Kofi Annan and also the UN Secretary General in New York saying to the, uh, the, uh, the General Assembly very clearly, the unity has now got to be raised to what he called another level. And that means Russia and China on board. Is there a way to do that? Well, I think that if Russia and China are together, it's already not uh, unilateralism, it's uh, dualism. And uh, second, I would say that uh, a new level of unity of the international community does not mean Russia and China bending their position. I think there should be a compromise between the Western position and Russian and Chinese position. How could that be found? I mean, do you have a definition in, in your mind of where there can be that agreement? involving Russia where Russia signs up? Well, uh, Russia will sign up for a political dialogue between the two sides without military interference from, uh, from outside so that the Syrians decide themselves what kind of government they will have. That's the only way. Where do you believe this can go? There will be a, a conference in Moscow, yet another conference. We saw many conferences in Bosnia. Do you believe there is any possibility of some kind of diplomatic resolution? The French now are talking about a, a Syria no-fly plan. It's beginning to sound like Iraq or Bosnia. Uh, I think that uh, a no-fly zone will be rejected by the Syrian government because it will be definitely a safe haven for, for the insurgents. And like, Russia like will it lay by into Like that? it was in Libya. Uh, until today, Russia was not for a uh, no-fly zone uh, uh, over Syria. And uh, Russia is uh, working now on convening this international conference so that there is a consensus on a certain solution that would be offered to both sides, to the Syrian government and to the insurgents. Let's see how it may work. Alexei Pushkov, Chair of the International Affairs Committee of the Russian Duma, thank you very much indeed for joining well, me here on The Hub. Now a wave of bomb attacks targeting Shia pilgrims.